We've all been in the situation where we don't feel like working out. It might feel like it's some sort of lack of motivation, but actually, is it? Is it really a lack of a inspiring Instagram quote that's missing from your life that's gonna get you to the gym and get back on track with your training? Or is it more the fact that maybe you've overdone the training, maybe you've got too much frequency, too much intensity, and that's pushing you to a level of burnout? Whatever it is, it's important to understand what is actually driving that lack of action because whatever the problem is, it's resulting in a lack of action, whether that's no energy, no motivation, or complete burnout, you are resulting in having no action. You're not actually doing anything that's progressing you towards your goal right now. But if you feel like it's a lack of motivation, but it's actually something else, then you're perhaps not really getting to the root cause of the issue and sorting that problem out. And that's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode of the podcast. I'm Simon Mitchell, host of the Muscle Mindset and Meal Prep podcast. If you are new to the show, welcome. If you are a listener who has maybe tuned in for one of the 400 plus episodes that we've done in the past, welcome back. It's awesome to have you here. Now, if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, leaving a rating and a review would be absolutely awesome. Likewise, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. That would be equally awesome. So first off, let's look at the signs that you may be actually having no energy. Maybe it's not motivation at all. So when you look at your progress in the gym, how is that going? Are you actually just making no progress week after week? Now, obviously calories will play a part in that. And if you are in a calorie deficit, then you can't necessarily expect to be having strength PRs and weightlifting PRs every single time you hit the gym. The fact that you are in a calorie deficit means that sometimes you're gonna have a shitty workout. So you have to bear that in mind. Now, if you're not in a calorie deficit, and you are expecting to at least progress over the medium to long term in terms of how much you're lifting, in terms of the repetitions that you're doing, then judge how you are performing based on that. Because if you have no energy, you're not fueling your body in the right way, then that could be reflected in the amount of weight that you're lifting and the amount of progress that you're making. So that's one key marker that you want to look out for. You might also be regressing. That would also be a red flag warning sign to say, hold up, we need to sort this out because this shit is going in the wrong fucking direction. So if you're someone who is looking to progressively overload, whether that is in terms of the amount of tension you can create in the muscle, in terms of how you execute an exercise, or whether it's the number of repetitions, the number of sets, the amount of weight that you're lifting, all of those different variables, if they're actually going in the wrong direction, that is a huge sign that something, again, is rotten in Denmark, as they say. Not that I'm sure why would stuff be rotten in Denmark and not any other country, I don't know. But anyway, but again, caveat that with the fact that if you're in a calorie deficit, you could be seeing some sort of strength decrease if you're in that calorie deficit for a period of time. So just bear that in mind, don't necessarily jump to huge conclusions. The other thing to look out for would be your tiredness levels. If you're constantly tired all the time, day after day, maybe it is you're relying on caffeine, coffee, energy drinks, caffeine pills, pre-workouts to actually get you revved up for sessions, then maybe that chronic level of tiredness is a hint to say, well, okay, maybe you've got no real energy, you're not getting the nutrients in, you're not getting the sleep you need to actually fuel those workouts. That could be a huge part of the problem. Again, it's nothing to do with motivation, but it could be one of the key factors at play. And then finally, this is more like just how things feel. Does everything feel a freaking struggle? I know life's a struggle, and you know when you get into adulthood, freaking get being an adult is fucking mind-numbingly boring, but hey-ho. And finally, we're gonna talk about basically how do things feel in general. If everything feels like a little bit of a struggle and you're at war with yourself, you're at war with your diet, you're at war with going to the gym, all of these sorts of things might be stacking up to say, again, if I'm really, really low on calories or low on energy or just working out too intensely, that could be a sign that maybe I'm really stressing myself, stressing my body out to the point 
at which I'm just not enjoying this process anymore. And then that gives you that kind of feeling, that slump feeling. So let's move on then to the signs that you've got no motivation. Now, the first thing would be you're not taking action. If you've got no motivation, you are not actually really going to the gym or you're skipping workouts. You know, if you are someone who is maybe got no energy, you still might be going to the gym on a frequent basis. It's just the workouts you're having are pretty crap. But if you've got no motivation, then it might be the case that you can't even get your ass off of the sofa to go to the gym in the first place. So that would be one sort of key sign. Or your the other thing would be you're creating excuses to justify that lack of action in your own mind. So you cr you create you make it seem like it's okay in your own mind. You convince yourself that it's okay to have skipped that workout or to have not been to the gym for three weeks or something like that because of this, because of that, because, oh, because of this and this and this and this and this and this. All these things were building up that meant that you couldn't go to the gym or at least that's the excuse that you want to give yourself. The other thing is, you know, are you enjoying the process? If you're not deriving any pleasure from the process of lifting weights, you know, focusing on your nutrition, again, it's a sign of motivation. You kind of reach that point where it just feels like a drag. And again, that is a different solution to in terms of having no energy. Now, if you're always as well seeing the negatives in everything, that can really point to or allude to a bit of a negative mindset that you can build up. And again, that really does affect how you think about training, it affects how you think about nutrition, and it affects how you think about your progress. So if you're having all of those experiences and you're also waiting for motivation to hit you, so if you're sat at home and you're not feeling like you wanna to go to the gym, you're not enjoying that process anymore, you're creating the excuses but then you're just waiting, you're waiting for motivation to hit you, that's probably a sign that it's maybe not to do with energy, it's maybe to do with something's not quite right in terms of trying to get you inspired to follow a particular program. Now, whilst the signs that I've gone through there might be hinting at two different sources of a problem, they are actually fairly intertwined, as you can imagine. So for example, low calories and frequent intense workouts, they could lead to burnout, which could lead to a lack of motivation, and so on and so on and so on. So it's not necessarily as cut and dry, as black and white as either I have no motivation or I have no energy. Often it's kind of interlinked. Maybe the no energy leads to shitty workouts, shitty progress, you feel like you're unmotivated, and then you start to kind of veer off your whole process and your whole kind of approach to health and fitness and nutrition and all that sort of good stuff. So that's the key thing to remember is that all of these things are often interlinked. So how can you actually solve this problem? How can you get over no energy, no motivation? How can you get around that? So the first thing would be calories. Let's start there, right at the basics. Are they appropriate for you, your goal, your activity level, all these different sorts of things. If you're constantly experiencing low energy, maybe high levels of hunger and cravings, Maybe it's an opportunity for you to look at your calorie intake. Maybe it is an opportunity to take a diet break, push things back up to maintenance, get some good workouts in, get some good motivation going. And again, that can snowball for you as well. Then have a look at your workouts, look at the volume, look at the number of sets, the number of exercises that you're doing, and look at the intensity with which you are doing them. You don't need to push every single set to absolute failure in order to make progress. But if you're doing seven exercises and you're doing seven sets per exercise and they're taking all to failure, that's probably a recipe for a lack of progress and complete burnout. So maybe you're not that intense or you're not that far skewed to one side, but again, it's worth looking at those workouts to say, well, actually, I can make good progress doing a little bit less and being a bit smarter with my training, so let's see if I can do that and let's see if that actually kickstarts something for me. The other thing would be rest. You know, are you actually focusing on your on your rest and are you looking at how you can recover from training as much as you are looking at training itself? Because it's one of those things that's often neglected. You know, lifting weights in the gym is kind of cool. You know, you can talk about PRs and stuff like that, but no one talks about the PRs of how much sleep they got. But it's a hugely important factor, especially when it comes to your lifting performance. 
For example, if you think about the situation where if you don't get any sleep, you wake up tired, how good is that training session going to be? And a shitty training session day after day after day, week after week after week is going to have a dent in your motivation. Again, all of these things are kind of interlinked. So then you talk about the nutrition itself. So you sorted out calories, but what about the food that you are actually eating? Yes, calories are the most important thing, but they're not the only important thing. That's the key thing to remember. So yes, energy balance has to be right. It has to be right for you, your activity level and your goal, but you also have to have some view as to what you're actually eating in order to have optimal health. So for example, if you're someone who is weight training, then it's a likelihood that carbs are gonna be your preferential source of energy. So are your carbohydrates too low for what you prefer and what is gonna give you the best results? Now that might be completely different to someone else who's maybe doing keto and getting great results doing that, but for you, you personally, do you do better with carbohydrates? Again, assess what you're eating, look at nutrients, vitamins, minerals, make sure that 80% of your diet plus is from whole foods, so you're talking fruit, vegetables, lean meats, fish, dairy, things like that are uh, what is occupying the majority of your diet. Then look at the process. So you wanna be focusing on the inputs and the small wins. Often what people do is they set themselves a big goal and I'm all for ambitious goals and ambitious targets and things like that. But if that's all you're focusing in on, it can be very demoralizing and demotivating when you are just in the thick of it. So for example, if your goal is to lose 20 kilos, that is quite a long-term objective. That's not gonna happen overnight. But if your only goal was to lose that 20 kilos, well, what happens on day one? You're not really gonna be very close to that goal at all. You're not really gonna be very close to that goal after week one, week two. You might have made small progress steps and significant progress steps, but you're not gonna be as close to that goal end goal as you might have hoped because that shit takes time. So when you think about it, if all you're ever comparing yourself to is this long-term goal, then it can be very demotivating. So think about setting yourself goals that are based on the inputs. So the inputs being things like going to the gym three, four, five times a week, whatever it is, sticking to your calories, making sure you've got lots of nutrients in your diet. Maybe it's around how many portions of fresh vegetables and fresh fruit that you're having, hitting a protein target, hitting a water target, taking your supplements, all these different sorts of things are input goals that are actually, if you started to tick them off on a regular basis, you would get progressively closer towards the end goal, but you're not setting up all of your happiness and your enjoyment and your motivation around where you are now versus where you want to be. You gotta think about that process in the middle. And finally, I would look at gratitudes. So it seems a little bit, um, for some people it seems a bit woo-woo, like it's a bit new age, but it is actually a proven thing that those people who reflect and are doing gratitude on a daily basis, so things that they are grateful for, are more positive about their lives and more positive about the things that they're trying to achieve. So put that in a weight loss context or a building muscle context. Again, talking about if you're thinking all about that long-term goal, you miss all of this stuff that is really, really positive in your life. So if you've got this process of every day you reflect on the last 24 hours and you write down something that you can be grateful for, that is a really positive thing and it starts you to get thinking more positively about the actual journey, about the process. And it's something that I get my clients to do on a regular basis. So in my private Facebook group, we have a thread, which is a gratitude thread. Now it's got hundreds and hundreds of posts on it. And what I encourage clients to do is go in there and just write one thing every single day that you are grateful for. And it just creates this big wall of positivity in the group that everybody else can feed off. And it starts to, again, it gets you motivated to hear about other people's stories. It gets you motivated to think that, okay, they went through that problem and that was solved that way. That's great, I'm gonna do the same thing. Again, try and get those things around you that put you in that positive frame of mind. So ultimately, it's, not necessarily whether you are low on energy or low on motivation. Often the two things are interlinked and it's about thinking about your nutrition and your training at a completely 360 degrees, holistic level, whatever buzzword you wanna use for it, 
and addressing those issues and those situations so that you can put yourself in the best possible position to make the best possible progress. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the show. If you did, feel free, come and visit me on Instagram at iron underscore paradise underscore fitness. Like I said at the beginning, if you're listening on a podcast platform, a rating and a review would be absolutely awesome. If you're watching on YouTube, a like and a subscribe would also go down well. And as a thank you for doing that, what I'm gonna do is put some links in the show notes so you can get access to some free resources. So whether it's the fact that you want to figure out how many calories you want to eat in terms of achieving your goal, be that a calorie deficit, calorie surplus, if you're building muscle maybe, whether you want a guide on how to understand more about calories and macros, I'll put a link to that in there. Plus, if you're a beginner and you want a free four-week training program, absolutely, you can get that as well. All of those links will be in there as well. And if you're someone who just wants to skip this whole process of figuring out how to put all of the pieces of the puzzle together, then check out my online coaching program, The Lean Life Method, which you can, again, find out all the information about. You can find out about what people have done in the past in terms of their body transformations, losing body fat, building muscle, and achieving great results. So if you're tired of that whole frustration around trying to figure out what it is you should be doing. Maybe you listen to a lot of these podcasts and you get the good information, but you still kind of doubt yourself as to whether you're putting it together in the right way. Are you building a training program that is making the most out of your time and out of your efforts in the gym? Have you got your nutrition dialed in so that all of that effort you're putting into my fitness pal, into tracking your calories, is it pushing you in the in the right direction? Are you creating the sustainable habits and the lifestyle changes needed to maintain it? If you want to figure out or understand if the Lean Life Method and coaching with me one-to-one is something that you'd be interested in, click that link in the show notes and you can actually also book in for a free consultation call with me as well. But for now, all I'm gonna say is thanks so much for listening, thanks so much for watching, keep living the lean life and I'll see you for the next episode of the show.